Hi, I'm Bill Ritchie, and a friend of mine uh, gave me the idea of taking an image from, uh, from the web, uh, processing the picture in Photoshop, and then printing it out on a laser, a laser print on silicone-backed uh, label stock. This is uh, shipping label paper. And uh, I printed these two pictures out from, of my friend, actually. And I thought I would transfer that to copper and then etch it and print it for this little videotape. But uh, before I transfer it, I thought I'd do a little marking up on the, uh, on the laser print in the black areas with, uh, oh, I've got an X-Acto knife here. And I can scratch off the toner like that. So it's not just a straight photograph. One of the advantages of this process is that you can write on it. You can, you know, write longhand or you can print uh, words and whatnot. And uh, they'll be coming out, you know, just like they would, like white writing on black ground. But when you transfer it to the plate, they'll be backward. But when you print them, they'll be rightward again. So if you want to write in your etching or, uh, you know, put numbers in or something like that, this is a good way to do it. There. Now I've made a pretty good mess of it. Next I have to uh, take several steps. First I have to, I've already beveled the edge of the copper plate so it's not sharp. I don't want it to hurt my laminator which is one of the next steps. Or my uh, felts in my uh, printing press when I print it. So I bevel the edges. I've scrubbed it down with some fine steel wool just to kind of take the shine off of it. And then I have to uh, degrease it. Degreasing means you uh, wash it with vinegar and salt, let it dry, and then I'll put these two together, run them through the laminator, run it through about four or five times to be sure that that plate is completely hot and the laser toner will uh, fuse, stick to the uh, copper plate. Like I said, I do that about four or five times. And then I bake it in a toaster oven. And uh, I don't know what the setting is, like 350 degrees, 400 degrees, something like that. And that will make sure that that toner is well fused to the copper plate, very hard. I can still do some work in the black area, so while that's heating up, maybe I'll just try that. But the ground isn't very strong right now. It's kind of fragile. It needs to be fused even harder. It's kind of a dull look to it. When I'm done fusing it in the oven, it'll be kind of shiny, and that's when it's the toughest. Beautiful. You may have noticed when I took the, when I peeled back the paper, there was one little tiny spot there. And that's where it is here. And when you see that happen, that means you've got to put something there to keep that from being a big hole, which is what's going to happen if I etch it the way it is. So I'm going to put some tiny specks of some stuff out. I'm going to use a universal etching ground. It's really easy to handle.
Well, now it's ready to etch. And uh, I'm going to put some of this transparent uh, contact paper on the back so that the etch, uh, the etchant won't eat away on the back of it. And wrap up the extra areas with uh, shipping tape or something like that. Most people use ferric chloride. And ferric chloride is a good etchant. It's odorless, not toxic, uh, pretty harmless to human beings. But it eats copper and brass. Uh, but you have to etch it upside down. That's the only. That's the only funny thing about it. But that's pretty easy to overcome that little obstacle. So I recommend ferric chloride. It's it's about. Oh, a quarter of an inch, half inch, maybe above the bottom of the tray. This is not fresh ferric chloride. It's been used a number of times. I don't know how many times. I just use it until it's not working anymore, and then I throw it away. I wash it down the drain with lots and lots of running water. It's a mineral salt. No more harmful than table salt in my opinion as far as the environment goes. I would welcome anybody to tell me otherwise. Looks like it's not quite deep enough to cover that in so I think I'll add a little more from my gallon jug. I'll bite this for about 10 minutes, or I don't know. I won't know how deep it's etched until I take it out and look at it with a magnifier. The way I make prints is in stages. I do it through many, many stages, or states they're called. Uh, and I don't even take a print until I really have an I no idea what it's going to look like. And then I, I take a trial proof. Sometimes I'm... Uh, lucky and it works the first time but usually not usually I have to go back and rework it when I make my um, half wood presses I usually test them with this kind of process and sometimes I get to make a brand new plate to test each one this one is a kind of an experiment to see how that process of taking photographs off the web or any kind of digital photograph treat it with Photoshop and transfer it to metal plate with the laser printer on cellophone transfer paper, which is just the backing from label stock that I threw away the labels and used the back, the shiny side of the back. If I agitate this constantly, it's better than if I just let it sit. Uh, probably speeds it up about twice. Whereas it might take five, ten minutes uh, sitting still, if I agitate it, it'll probably go in five minutes. Now I've rinsed it all off. And looks pretty nice. I can see it better if I give it some of that vinegar and salt treatment again. I call this pickling. Pickling it, pickling it with vinegar and salt. That cleans it up, brings all that, takes all that oxides out, makes it more visible. And now I think I could probably print it. I'll, I'll look at it with a magnifier just to be sure. It was about 10 minutes, I think. I'll block that dry. I look at it with a magnifier. Give me a better idea how much etch is there. Not much, but you don't want to etch too long. If you do etch too long, it'll bite away some of the finest spots. But now I can print it after I strip off the plastic back. Dry it off completely, ink it up print it. Now, most people would tell you you have to take the ground off first, but lately I've been thinking, well, what for? 
why not just leave it on and see what happens. Besides, if you decide you, you want to etch it some more, you'll have uh, pretty good ground on it already. Plus, there are some other etching techniques to, to try, like Aquatint. Ready to print. I made a lot of videos of printing plates, so you can always look at those, but this is really hard because it's got that black ground on it, and I can't tell. I really can't tell uh, how I'm doing because usually I have some black ink tone to look at. Now the most I have is a little bit of reflection, but uh, I'm going to print it anyway. Interesting way to work, and I love surprises. I'm printing on a Fabriano paper, and I soaked it for, I don't know, five or ten minutes. Then I blotted off all the extra paper extra water, excess water. I'm printing on the press that's going to my friend. I warmed the plate before I printed. I set the pressure using two hands. You're never sure about the pressure until you print it a print. Incidentally, when I'm done with this video, I'll probably put it in the uh, Press Ghost, which is this uh, flash drive that I build into all my Haplood presses now. It has lots of videos on it, books and things. And I always put on a moment number for my game Proximates. Uh, let's see, this is the year is 11, the month is 11, the day is the 15th, and it's 1730. There it is. A little weird, but pretty good start. Very dark. And this area up in here, which is all supposed to be black, will have to take some reworking. And that'll be for the next part of the video. When you, uh, that next part, is about going back into the plate and you could etch it or you could dry point, you could do aqua tint. I'm going to demonstrate dry pointing because my friend, I think, I think my friend wants to do dry point and uh, that's a very direct process. Now that you've got the image going and you've got a trial proof, uh, you can make some judgments and start doing the dry point and then as you go along you can work on it. And I might also strip that photo ground or that laser tone off of there to make it a little easier to see what you're doing when you're doing the dry point. I think that's a good idea.